What's up guys, my name is Westy, and continuing my Battlefield 4 multiplayer coverage that's going on right now at E3, I'll be bringing you an interview that was had with Carl Magnus yesterday on the live stream. The live stream itself was extremely long, it was around 5 hours and it contained a lot of information about the Battlefield 4 multiplayer, so if you want to see any of that information jump over to my channel, I've got a few videos up summarising most of it for you. But anyway, onto the interview, this is what kicked off the live stream and it was about a 20 minute interview with Carl Magnus who is the general manager at DICE. And he summarised a lot of what they've been working on for Battlefield 4, which is like Levolution, the Spectator mode, Suppression, Naval Combat, a lot of that's in here. So I'm going to be breaking it down and bringing out some of the best bits of what he said. So the first thing we come to is the Commander mode. Now he's got a little bit to say here, so I'm going to let the video run and then just sort of talk about it a little bit afterwards and how it's going to affect Battlefield 4 in general. But what he really has to say is quite interesting because it's no longer just 64 man in Next Generation. That was one of the things that we wanted to change. So uh, you actually have a 64 player match ongoing, but the two commanders are two additional slots outside of that. So uh, one of the big differences in commander mode compared to BF2 is that the commander does not have a physical presence on the battlefield. So a physical presence, you mean that there's no capability of actually destroying them on the map? No, you cannot find them a knife in the back. It. Uh, it was one of the things that were very frustrating for the commanders in <laughs> BF2. Uh, you have to run somewhere and hide in the grass or somebody and then you know, usually the spec ops guy come and find them and just knife them. So, <laughs> now what we want to do with commander mode to, is to enhance the, the team play that we have of course. So we want to get that eye in the sky kind of guy that can help uh, turn the tide of the battle with both the information, you know, the information right. warfare, what's going on and then relay that to the squad, uh, squads that you have on the battlefield. But also taking direct action with vehicle drops or uh, you know dropping in the the uh, what do you call it the offensive capabilities right. or missiles etc. Um, and one of the big changes this time around as well is that those different assets that the, uh, the commander has available are tied to different points on the map. Not all of them, but right. several of them. So, for instance, if you capture uh, point B here on this map, siege of uh, Shanghai, that's when the commander actually get the, uh, the, the, tomahawk. the yeah the tomahawk coming in. For instance. So what we can really take from that is knowing that now battles are going to be still 32 versus 32, making a 64-man match on the ground. But Commander is going to be separate from that, so both Commanders aren't going to take part on the server. So technically, it's now a 66-man game. And if you didn't already know, you can be a Commander from either your desktop or a tablet, which means you can take control of the battlefield from an iPad or an Android tablet from pretty much anywhere. Carl even says later in this interview, you can take control of a battlefield even if you're sitting on a bus. It doesn't matter where you are, you can take control. He also mentioned how they're going to control the commander mode so it's not too overpowered on the battlefield. You're going to have to actually take control of certain objectives to be able to call in certain actions. Like specific flags will allow you to do specific things. Like you have to have a certain flag to throw down a tomahawk missile. You have to have a certain flag to bring the gunship in. Next up is Levolution. Now Carl describes it as sort of a dynamic environment and the way that the player can change the map and sort of control how the map changes over time. Now we already know one of the big examples of Levolution is the Skyscraper, however they do talk about a different one here so I'll put that bit on now. One of the great things I mean, you brought up to the attention is the bollards. Uh, there, uh, for those of you who are not really formally under, you know, get the fact of uh, you got to pull out your dictionary to find out what bollard is, <laughs> uh, you'll get the chance to see it. They're actually, I, I took a picture of it here in LA, there's what they're bollards that are blocking for E3 so they're blocking the streets. Yep. Uh, so I kind of got a Battlefield 4 taste uh, whenever <laughs> I was strolling through LA. Uh, but you'll see it, you'll get the chance to see in game there's a there's a red and a green side the green side it actually fall, retracts back into the ground and allows any type of vehicles yep. uh, to be able to pass back through the red side no no tanks can go through that they're talking about the bollards on the battlefield around the bridges of this map you have to have the specific intel or the right permissions to cross those bridges so that enemy tanks cannot cross those bridges without having the intel off the player who's holding it this was further confirmed later in the live stream, this is why I'm telling you about this now. I just thought it was relevant to bring it into the interview because they were talking about these bollard systems. So really he just confirmed that Battlefield 3's naval warfare just wasn't up to scratch and they've sort of replaced it with these attack boats that have these high powered machine guns on them. I feel completely vulnerable out there in the open. I mean, it doesn't matter if there's a tank shooting at me. Yeah. Even a sniper in the distance can pick me off. I've got no way to defend myself. How does that 
uh, change in Battlefield 4? Well, the, the amphibious assault that we now have in the game as well, uh, you, you will see different vehicles. I mean, we have like the, the jet ski, for instance, which is That's very awesome. fast, you know, but it's, you have to move very quickly because you have no offensive capabilities. But then you have other, like the patrol boats, for instance. These, these are more, you know, you have some offensive capabilities with, with the, the cannon they have mounted on it. I even right. believe that you have some towers, you know, guided missiles on them, etc. So you can do some damage there, definitely. So it depends on how you use them and, and uh, what kind of vehicles you choose, of course. Um, so again, like what you mentioned, the fact that these amphibious vehicles, they have the ability to eject out with a jet ski. Yeah. So really, he just confirmed that Battlefield 3's naval warfare just wasn't up to scratch. And they've sort of replaced it with these attack boats that have these high-powered machine guns on them and tow launchers as well. So it looks like we're going to get in some surprises for naval warfare. But now we come to quite an important bit, and that's suppression. And he has some specific details about how it's going to work in Battlefield 4. Things as well, like we've changed the... The, uh, the suppress system, you know, we got oh, a lot go, of feedback on suppress. Detail now. Yeah, details. But uh, for instance, so suppress is now something that is more focused on the uh, the support class with the LMGs, etc. Okay. Uh, which I think is what a lot of people out there really wanted to see. Uh, it's not so present in the actual close quarter combat. It's more on the range combat. Um, Things like you also have, uh, if you're behind cover and you go scoped, you will actually have an automatic lean over feature. Uh, so if you're sitting in cover and you go in scope, then your character will go like whoop and look up. Um, That's greatness. So yeah, and, and these things, will, you know, hopefully people will like them. Uh, otherwise, we have to do something about it, of course. But there's a lot of things changing there as well. So for suppression in Battlefield 4, it looks like we're still going to be seeing suppression across all classes, but it's much heavier in the support class. And this seems a logical way to actually deploy it. Support is actually built for suppressing targets, so it makes sense to give them the best suppression possible. And he also mentioned a cover feature where you can poke down behind cover and then you can sort of poke your character up over cover without revealing yourself completely. Now, that sounds kind of cool as well. And finally we come to spectator mode, which is one of the biggest things I think Battlefield 4 has to offer. Now sadly the Twitch recording of the interview with Carl Magnus actually sort of buggered up the audio and the video at that point when he was talking about the spectator mode, but I watched the whole stream pretty much all the way through, so I have a pretty good knowledge of how spectator mode is going to work. But this is only pre-alpha stage, so don't expect this to be exactly the same as when the game drops in autumn. So essentially spectator mode is going to be working how you would expect a spectator mode to work. You're going to have multiple different camera angles. So first of all you've got a tabletop view which is up on the screen right now where you can have an overview of the whole battlefield that's going on in front of you. This will be pretty much the same as what commander mode actually looks like apart from the map isn't interactive. You're just going to have an overview showing you all the different objectives, where different teams are, different vehicles, stuff like that. It's a general overview. We then have first and third person cameras, now they're pretty much self-explanatory, where the first person you can switch between all 64 players that are in the game, or as many players as there are in the game, and uh, you can have multiple viewpoints, however the camera is static in that mode. Moving into third person, this is where you can start to use the camera movements. You can zoom in and out of the soldier that you're actually focused on, again you can use all 64 players on the map as a camera, and you can also do 360 degree views around that player as well, so this is where it starts to get a bit more dynamic. And finally there's a free cam function, now if anybody's actually used the Battlefield 3 free cam, it's a pretty much the same thing apart from you don't have to use a MAV, you just fly a camera around and you can view any battle from any different angle however you want. The cool thing about this though is there are five different cameras inside the free cam mode itself. So when you want to move from one camera to another part of another camera, you can do that and the camera that you left will stay in exactly the same place until you return to it. The idea being that you can leave multiple cameras around the battlefield, leave them there, they're static and the whole game you can view from pretty much any area of the map and you have up to five of those so this is going to be pretty cool. Right now, the spectator mode has only been confirmed for PC. In an interview further into the live stream with Jinto or Daniel Matros, who is a producer for Battlefield 4, he confirmed that it's only for PC right now, and when he was questioned on consoles, his response was, we'll see if we'll bring it to consoles. He didn't say it with any contempt, he didn't sound as if he was unsure or sure. I think they may be testing it, however they're not sure whether they need to bring it to consoles or not. Of course this is all speculation, all we know right now is that PC is the only confirmed platform to have spectator mode on it. And I'll add this in, there is no confirmed recording function built into that spectator mode as of yet, which means you're going to have to use an external program to record that spectator mode. I know a lot of people will be using that spectator mode to create cinematics and stuff like that, it's not just going to be used for the competitive scene. 
But anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video. That interview was extremely interesting. If you want to watch it in full, there's a link in the description to that live stream, which can be watched again in full. I said it's five hours long, so if you want to spend five hours of your time watching Battlefield 4, go ahead. It's in the description. But for all your other Battlefield 4 news, jump over to my channel, guys. I've got videos going up daily at the moment about all the Battlefield 4 information you could possibly ever need. But I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a like. And my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. <laughs>